Hello everyone, welcome back. But if you are new here, this is a relatively new channel. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and share with others to stay up to date on what's in store for you. February and March really start to kick things up for us, especially with the nodes and the eclipses. So definitely tune in for that. I do offer affordable one-on-one -on -one appointments where we can really dive into all of this, but where it's super specific to your chart and thus your life. There is the link in the description below that will take you straight to my appointments page where you can book away. With that being said, this is a general horoscope to give you an idea of what's coming up, but it doesn't include your personal charts and placements. So this is not conclusive. Anyways, let's get into it. Hello, Gemini Risings. On March 9th, Mercury, your ruling planet, enters your Aries 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. This will most likely feel welcomed by the majority of you because when Mercury was in Pisces, and with it being your ruling planet, literally ruling your first house, Mercury in Pisces, things get a bit muddled. Communication uh, may not be the preferred mode of communication with Mercury in Pisces. So when Mercury goes into your Aries 11th house, I think communication, speaking, writing, etc., gets faster, um, clearer, more concise to the point. So um, if, that's, if that's your thing, then that will definitely be welcomed. Now, the following day on March 10th, there will be a new moon in your Pisces 10th house of career and public recognition. So for some of you, this literally might mean a new beginning or a new chapter with a job. For some of you, this might be a new way of existing within your career, a new outlook on your career. Um, but all in all, definitely keep an eye out for March 10th, give or take a couple days with something like a new project or a new beginning, a new chapter within your career and your public image. Then on March 11th, the next day, a very welcomed Venus enters your Pisces 10th house of career and public recognition. Venus is exalted here. Venus is very happy here. So, you know, with February's Saturn and Mercury combust in, in this area, February, you know, may have had some challenges or some things come up that maybe weren't preferred in the area of career and public recognition, especially if you have your midheaven landing here. However, on March 11th, when Venus enters this area, like I said, Venus is going to ease things up a little bit, um, especially because Venus rules, you know, your 12th house of subconscious, your fifth house of creative self-expression. So I think especially if you're in the creative arts in terms of a career, um, this could definitely help merge, you know, your thoughts, your creativity with your career. But all in all, I think Venus is definitely going to ease things up in that department and also help you really get clear on what you love and value about your career and where, you know, maybe some of you are getting more clear on what you want to love and value about your career. Then on March 18th, Mercury is going to enter shadow in your Aries 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. So March 18th onward, definitely pay attention to what comes up, what stories are starting to play out, particularly in the area of friends, groups, communities, long-term goals, your hopes, your dreams, because when Mercury enters shadow, it's the con it's the contextual clues. It's what's coming up that you are going to go back over when Mercury goes retrograde. And this one, I think, is going to be more of a supercharged Mercury retrograde because the North Node is involved. So Mercury enters shadow. It will be conjunct the North Node. Mercury goes will go retrograde and then go direct exactly conjunct the North Node. So this is going to be... Um, a, I think a stronger, more in your face type of Mercury retrograde. And for you, it's going to be who you surround yourself with and your long-term goals. 
And Mercury is also your ruling planet as a Gemini rising. So you will probably feel this more than most. Now on March 22nd, Mars then enters your Pisces 10th house of career and public recognition. Now, Mars is not all that happy in Pisces. So luckily you have Venus there to kind of help ease the situation. But Mars entering Pisces, Mars is, you know, it is, it it wants to move. It wants to take action. And in Pisces, it sort of dissolves things. So things, you know, maybe there's a part of you that wants to take action and move things forward, but it kind of feels like you're running in water type of situation. So if, if that starts to come up, um, just make sure that you don't, you don't take it personally and fall into, you know, being angry or oversensitive about it. Because the the thing that I've noticed with Mars and Pisces is things, you know, like the way you normally take action and drive towards whatever it is. And for you, it's going to be around the career and the public image. Um, It doesn't move as quickly. Like I said, it can feel like you're sort of running in water. Again, it depends on your personal placements. But generally speaking, when you want things to happen and they're not happening or it feels like you're sort of floating, um, it's it's very easy to become overly sensitive or moody or you can kind of fall into the martyr savior archetype, especially with Mars and Pisces. So just be aware of that towards the end of March. Things might feel different around the career, around the public image, but just keep in mind, it is going to pass. When Mars enters the later degrees of Pisces, it gets a lot more focused and then Mars moves into its home sign of Aries. So where Mars is very, very comfortable and happy. So, you know, don't worry about it too much. You just might hit some, some, um, not delays, but maybe some frustrations in terms of wanting things to happen. And, you know, they're not happening right at that moment. You might have to wait a little bit. Then we end the month on March 25th with a full moon lunar eclipse at five degrees Libra. And this is a full moon happening in your fifth house of fun, pleasure, children, dating, romance. So something is being illuminated around fun, having fun, Um, you know, children, if you have children, something is being illuminated or culminating around your children. This is an eclipse, so it's going to be more intense than the average full moon. And for you, I mean, I guess it's not so bad to have this intense full moon in the area of fun in the chart. Um, but you know, if you have children, definitely pay attention to what's culminating with them. If you are single and dating, definitely pay attention to what's going on in the dating department around this time. Something's being illuminated. Something is being culminated. Any creativity, self-expression projects that you're working on could come to fruition, could come to a culmination around this time, or, you know, a lot of you could be like a lot of you could just be more focused on how do I incorporate and culminate more fun in my life, especially with the stuff happening in the career sector where things it looks like things might slow down or become a bit frustrating for a bit. So some of you might say, OK, things things aren't happening right now or things are kind of slowing down in the career and I got to wait for things to pick back up again. Um, so some of you might shift your perspective. Well, how can I incorporate more fun if this is sort of on hold or not moving as quickly as I want it to? But what's interesting about this full moon lunar eclipse in your fifth house is there is a configuration going on at the same time that's going to require some adjustments. So for you, it's going to require some adjustments between your career and your subconscious thought patterns. So like I said, something's going on 
around a career, maybe a shift, maybe a move, maybe change of career, maybe project sort of, you know, wanting to move along. Um, it looks like there's a lot of potential situations playing out with career and public image. And you're trying to focus more on maybe incorporating more fun to maybe distract yourself or, um, you know, shift your perspective away from something that you can't control, that you can't, you know, you just have to let it play out. And so this adjustment going on between your subconscious thought patterns and your career, you know, make some adjustments on your perspective on your thought patterns. How are your thought patterns affecting the situation with your career? What can you control versus what you can't control? And at the end of the day, this full moon culminating in your fifth house, I think is getting you to get, you know, have a strong look at despite what's going on in your life and, you know, things happen, you know, faster, some things are slowing down, despite what's going on, how can you make adjustments with your perspective around your career and your subconscious thought patterns to incorporate more play, more fun, and more pleasure in your life?